Take a look at the person next to you And say God loves you and I love you too Now feel the love in the sanctuary Lift your voice and repeat after me We come together We come together We come together person next to you say I recognize the God in you feel the love in the sanctuary now lift your voice and repeat after me oh we come together 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 Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Unity of Springfield. We're going to get started with a service now. Let you find your seats. Oh, great. We're going to be singing out of the blue book this morning to start off with. The song is Blessed Be on page four. Blessed Be. Gonna set it free, let things be, let the thrill of life carry me, cause now I know I'm in the flow, I'm finally free, oh blessed be. Gonna set it free, let things be, let the thrill of life carry me, cause now I know I'm in the flow. I'm finally free, oh blessed be. Life unfolds with grace and ease, endless possibilities. They're everywhere, they've always been. When I choose to let them in, gonna set it free, let things be. Let the thrill of life carry me, cause now I know I'm in the flow. I'm finally free, oh blessed be. Gonna set it free, let things be. Let the thrill of life carry me, cause now I know I'm in the flow. I'm finally free, oh blessed be. I've outgrown those smaller dreams the way they used to limit me. I make my space, invite love in. Magic fills my life again. Gonna set it free, let things be. Let the thrill of life carry me. 
Cause now I know I'm in the flow, finally free, oh blessed be. Gonna set it free, let things be, let the thrill of life carry me. Cause now I know I'm in the flow, I'm finally free, oh blessed be. Well, it's a part of our connection with the greater unity movement. We connect and hold individual ministries in prayer each week. <clears throat> and I think it's very fortuitous we're going to be holding all the ministries today in the state of Florida in prayer. So let's go within in prayer right now. We hold this the Sunshine State, Florida, a state that has been through a lot and is facing a lot in a weather sense. The hurricanes that have blown through and are yet to come. And we just hold a prayer of safety, calm, and peace for everyone in this state and in others that have been impacted by recent storms. And we give thanks for the snowing. And so it is. Amen. Amen. And now we invite our platform assistant. Where is our platform assistant? There he is. Come on down, Bill. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> We're so glad you're here to join us today for our worship. And we extend a special welcome to those of you visiting us for the first time. <laughs> On your way in, you should have received a welcome packet, and we also have a gift for you, so please see one of our greeters after the service. Unity is a worldwide spiritual movement. We are an inclusive community and welcome all people. Today is uh, birthday Sunday, so we invite all of you with October birthdays to stand, and the congregation will sing the birthday song. have a few announcements <clears throat> to share you, with you this morning. So please join us after the service today in Margaret Kane Hall for our monthly fellowship potluck with birthday celebration. Unity of Springfield SOS team will have an organizational meeting today beginning at 1120 in the meditation board meeting room. Be a part of our long-standing volunteer service project beginning in 2004, feeding, gifting, and occasionally entertaining our homeless friends. If you would like to be a part of the team, reach out to Sandy Shepard or Carol Strict. Reiki treatments will be offered after the Sunday service in the chat room. Use the sign-up sheet located in the foyer to receive a free 10 to 15 minute treatment. If you are number one and number two on the sign up sheet, go directly to the chat room after the service to begin the treatment. Other participants, please continue to enjoy fellowship in Margaret Kane Hall until you are called by one of the particulars. The 9 a.m. spiritual speaking class for Sundays is currently studying the Dynamic Laws of Prosperity by Catherine Ponder. Everyone is welcome to attend, and books are available in our bookstore. Today at 11, Peggy Tell will host our Unity Prayer Service in, on Tuesdays at 11 o'clock. Peggy Tell will host our Unity Prayer Service in Zoom. This is a space to support with prayer those in our, on our prayer list, on our hearts, 
and in our community. Wednesday at 5.30, Karen Kelly will lead the gathering meditation via Zoom, creating a sacred space for quiet, introspective meditation. Upcoming events scheduled for our youth and family ministry are a play day happening next uh, and happening today at noon and Creative Adventures on October, October 27th at noon. The play day today will be uh, canceled, but we'll pick it up later in the month. So oh, I just okay. had to ask. Good. All right. <laughs> well, not good, but it'll be there. We'll still be able to participate, but next week. Up, uh, let's see here. Simon County Department of Public Health will host their annual flu shot clinic at the church uh, on Wednesday, October 9th from 10 to 11 a.m. in Margaret Kane Hall. Shots are free when providing an insurance card at the time of the vaccination. All are welcome to join in the flute circle with David Tell on Thursday, October 10th at one o'clock held in the sanctuary. Beginners are encouraged as well. And you are invited to participate in the monthly drumming circle, also with David Tell, on Thursday, October 17th at 6 p.m. in Margaret Kane Hall. Mark your calendars. Join Reverend Alden Studebaker on Saturday, November 9th from 10 to 11 a.m. as he presents Meditate Like Your Cat Workshop, a how-to practical workshop to help anyone meditate more effectively. It's based on Buster's book, which is available in our bookstore. As Buster, that's the name of your cat, right? <laughs> and we got to meet Buster yesterday at the uh, pet blessing. <laughs> so, emails are sent out weekly that have information on current happenings and how to join in events. To sign up for our emails, ask a greeter for a blue card and fill it out on both sides or visit our website to subscribe. Also, check out our website for up-to-date date information at unityofspringfieldil.org, all small letters. We would like to express thank you to Doris Hoverleck, Thank you, Doris, for sending all the birthday cards and well wishes, greeting cards to our congregations on behalf of Unity of Springfield. <laughs> Creating our lives and our world through the thoughts and beliefs we hold in mind is a spiritual principle we practice at Unity of Springfield. And we also know this truth. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God the source of all good. And our vision statement, a world powerfully transformed through the growing movement of shared spiritual awakening. A mission statement, we recognize God as love individualized in all people. Therefore, we provide a positive environment for spiritual growth that empowers all to be God's love in the world. Youth and Family Ministry Affirmation. Our youth and family ministry empowers the next generation with loving kindness and acceptance, creating a safe, safe place for children, teens, and young adults to explore, discover, and experience spirituality. Linda Cantor will now read our Today's Word. Good morning. The word for today, October 6, 2024, is joy. I rejoice in life's simple pleasures. Life's biggest moments, weddings, births, graduations, celebrations of all kinds, are cause for joy. But joy is also found in life's simpler moments, the day-to-day -day happenings that comprise daily living. Joy is in the sunrise, 
in my morning prayer, in the familiar faces I love and look forward to seeing, in the satisfaction I get from my work. It is in my favorite things and in the sweet surprises that come from trying something new and different. Joy is in the comfort I find in my favorite spiritual practices and in finding God anew as I deepen in spiritual insight. However it manifests, joy is part of me, a way to feel the peace and power of God in my heart and deep in my soul. And from 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 22, And they ate and drank before the Lord on that day with great joy. Again, the word for today is joy, and if you would join me in the affirmation, I rejoice in life's simple pleasures. Before we hear today's meditation and message from Reverend Alden, let us sing together, My Heart is Open, page 28 in the Blue Songbook. Let us prepare for a time of meditation and in reflection by opening our hearts and gently closing our eyes. Right now in this moment is our opportunity to feel and to know and to experience the fullness the full expression of God's spirit in and through us. And to help us do that, let us take in a deep breath and breathe in the very life light and energy of spirit. And as we exhale, let us imagine that we're letting go of all of the problems and challenges and heaviness of life. For we are here in this moment to accept and embrace divine love and energy. It's something that we are always in the presence of, but not always aware of. And so we make that shift in consciousness right now by just opening up. And we can imagine that we're opening a door <coughs> that's located in our chest area. <coughs> and we can imagine that we're opening our hearts as we open that door. And by opening that door, we begin to feel and sense something that is beyond anything that we experience in our outer daily lives. We feel and sense a warmth, a radiance, an inner glow that expresses outward, outward to every cell in our bodies, 
outward into this room or wherever we're experiencing this time of meditation right now. And this presence and power and energy is uplifting. It lifts us up. It guides us forward. It clears any discordant thoughts or emotions we may have been experiencing. And all we have to do is just open the door. All we have to do is just open our hearts. Open wide. And just simply surrender and be receptive to the energy, love, and power that is within us and all around us. Jesus referred to this place, this experience, as the kingdom of God within us. And the experience of our own innate spirituality, our own core of our being, is as precious as any kingdom. And so we quietly and inwardly just let the Spirit of God flow freely and fully, lifting us up. And so let us, for the next few moments, sit quietly and peacefully and just let the Spirit flow for a moment in the silence. It is from the stillness and the calm 
of inner contemplation, of simply letting go and letting God, that we find our empowerment, our confidence to move forward in life, and to be a light for others. We now come forth from this time of meditation and inner reflection, grateful for the experience and ready to greet whatever lies before us. And we give thanks in the name and through the power of the living Christ presence within us all. And so it is. Amen. Well, I'd like to thank everybody who's a part of making this service possible. There are so many people, and today we have all kinds of, well, some substitutes involved here today. We have our fill-in pianist, Charnel. Thank you. And where's, there you are, Linda, our song leader today. Thank you to Bill. Bill, Bill, there you are, Bill, platform assistant, and Linda Ganter. To Linda today. Two Lindas. And back in the... Um, Video sound booth, we have a, a family team today of Donna and Danny. Thank you. And to uh, Becky and Ron and Doris, who are greeters today, and to Chris Ferris, Sean, our administrative assistant, who helps to prepare our slides. So thank you to everybody there, and welcome to everybody watching us on YouTube and Facebook live stream. I'd like to uh, give a really shout out and thank you to our licensed Unity teachers. Uh, two of whom were our speakers while I was away on vacation. Thank you to Karen and to Peggy. You guys are great. And, and to Cindy as well. Um, it's really uh, so cool to know that you know, I can go on vacation and I don't have to really worry about stuff getting done well. You know, it's really, it's, I, I'll tell you, that helps a lot. We did go on vacation. Um, those of you who are Facebook's of friend, friends of mine know that as I probably put up close to about 700 <laughs> photos. And uh, I'm just gonna show you one of them. Um, this one right here, um, if you've been here before, you'll recognize where it is. For those of you who aren't familiar with this, this is the most visited site in the country of Denmark. <clears throat> this is the Little Mermaid statue in Copenhagen. and. And I, uh, when we went to Copenhagen one day, um, we, we were staying at an Airbnb over across the Sound in Malmo, Sweden. So we took the train over uh, one day to visit Copenhagen. And uh, I told Donna, I said, well, where we're going to go is about an 18-minute walk. And uh, this is the, the coolest thing to see in all of, all of Copenhagen. And when she saw it, she says, that little thing? <laughs> And, and now, while we were standing there looking at it, uh, there was a couple trying to take their own photos. You ever try to take like a selfie with other, you know, somebody else? And it never, it looks okay, but it's not really the best. And I walked up to them and I said, I said they handed me their phone and they got around the statue and I took some photos of them. And then we kind of stood there like this and they looked at us and they said, and I said, <laughs> so uh, we got to, to meet Somebody we didn't know, I think they were maybe from China. I'm not sure exactly what country they were from, but we had a great time on our vacation. And it kind of leads into what my talk title is today. And that is, People Are Good. And this is a continuation of a series I started three weeks ago called Unity in a Nutshell, where we look at the five essential teachings that you will find in any Unity Church. And the principle we are looking at is the, the second one that reads generally in this way. Our essence is of God, therefore we are inherently good. Now, two Sundays ago, back, you remember back when that was? That was uh, September 15th. I gave a talk called God is Good. God is good. God is absolute good throughout the universe. And I think most people can accept the idea that 
Well, God is good. You know, I can go along with that. But then we get to people. And we're like, I don't know. People, really? Good? No. <laughs> I love mankind. People I can't stand. Yeah. You've probably seen this before. And that's where many of us sometimes go when it comes to this idea of everybody being good. I mean, humankind is a group. Here you all. I'm looking it up here. I'm, a, I'm here. Humankind, good, humane, human values, having a sense of common humanity, individual people. I'm not so sure. I find certain individual people, maybe you do too, kind of challenging, kind of difficult to affirm, mm, good, really? Now, unity has always taught the divinity of humankind, always has. You will not find in any unity book any words like depravity or worm of the dust, or anything along those lines, you will find zero amount of that in any unity book. And if you can find that in a unity book, bring it to me, and I'll get my Sharpie out and we'll fix it. <laughs> <laughs> but I doubt we'll find it. You will find a lot of the messaging, though, about the depravity of humanity in other organizations, in other philosophies. And one of the most famous sermons ever given, I'm not talking about the Sermon on the Mount, that's probably the most famous, but the most famous sermon ever given was given 300 years ago, about 300 years ago, on July the 8th of 1741 at the First Church of Christ in Enfield, Connecticut. The speaker that day, who was a guest speaker, was the Reverend Jonathan Edwards. Do you know Jonathan? Mm. The title of his talk, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. Mm. This was a really famous sermon. In fact, they made copies of it. You could get copies of this, because this is, this is like the sermon to experience, because everybody wanted them. It is really interesting that he gave this sermon as a guest speaker. Maybe he thought, now nah, I'm going to try this out in my own church, but I'll try it out here. <laughs> this is why I usually scrutinize who my guest speakers are very closely. Because <laughs> I don't want some crazy preacher coming in here and going, you all going, you know where. Because if Jonathan Edwards had showed up here as a guest speaker, probably wouldn't have invited him back. And why? Well, I'm going to tell you why. Here, I'm going to share the top 10 ideas from his talk. Number one, God may cast wicked men into hell at any given moment. When he says men, he also means ladies. Back then, they didn't, you know, okay. Number two, the wicked deserve to be cast in hell. Divine justice does not prevent God from destroying the wicked at any moment. Number three, the wicked at this moment suffer under God's condemnation to hell. It gets better. Number four, <laughs> the wicked on earth at this very moment suffer a sample of the torments of hell. Just a sample, of course. The wicked must not think simply because they are not physically in hell that God in whose hand the wicked now reside is not at this very moment as angry with them as he is with those he is now tormenting in hell and who at this very moment feel and bear the fierceness of his wrath. Let me take a breath. Number five. Five. At any moment God shall permit him, Satan, stands ready to fall upon the wicked and seize them as his own. Mm-hmm. Six, if it were not for God's restraints, there are in the souls of the wicked men hellish principles reigning which presently would kindle and flame out into hell fire. We're almost done. Number seven, simply because there's not a visible means of death before them at any given moment, the wicked should not feel secure. 
number eight. Oh, you count well. Simply because it is natural to care for oneself to think that others may care for them, men should not think of themselves safe from God's wrath. Almost done. Number nine. All that wicked men may do to save themselves from hell's pains shall afford them nothing if they continue to reject Christ. And finally, number 10, God has never promised to save mankind from hell except for those contained in Christ through the covenant of grace. All right. That's the top 10. Jonathan Edwards' talk, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. When you look at these top 10 of that sermon, the message that comes very clear is this. People are not good. Mm. Which I find amazing and interesting and a little exasperating when I consider certain basic biblical ideas. And from the very first book of the Bible, the first chapter. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image and our likeness so that they may rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air. Oh, by the way, that's the stone commemorating the big sermon. I forgot to put that up, sorry. Oh, well, let's move on. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind, or humankind, in his own image, in the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. Created in the image of God. Book of Psalms. Of Psalms, chapter 8, verses 3 through 6. When I look at the night sky and see the work of your fingers, the moon, the stars you set in place, what are mere mortals that you should think about them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you made them only a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor, and you gave them charge over everything you made, putting all things under their authority. Now, in any of these passages from the Bible, do you hear anything about the depravity of humanity? Do you see the words wicked in hell in any of those descriptions of human beings? Do you get the sense that God is mad at us? No. Just no, it's just not there. And... If you think in an anthropomorphic sense about God, it's like God says to you, okay, I made you like me. Now you're in charge of your life. Go out there. And mind you, these biblical precepts come from the Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament. You know, the part of the Bible where God's pretty scary. Mm Mm-hmm. Reverend Jonathan Edwards, apparently, but unfamiliar with these verses. Or he was holding them back. Wonder what it was. People are good, but not all people express good behavior. And that includes us as well. We have moments when we don't have someone else's interests at heart. There are some people who appear to strive for perfection in being jerks. Mm -hmm. Or maybe worse than jerks, and you know the word for that. One time I put on on Facebook kind of a, a, a call for input. And I'm just going to share a little excerpt from that. I wrote, here you got to see what I wrote. Here's what I wrote. I'm all for peace 
War is bad for everybody except weapons companies. They do pretty well. I've taught from the pulpit for years that the Christ spirit is in every human being and that we all share a common spirituality and humanity regardless of religious affiliation or no affiliation. My upcoming Sunday message is people are good, but I'm having a real conundrum. I think that some people are really bad, evil, destructive, and nasty pieces of work. Oh my God, Reverend, you mean you actually spoke that on Facebook? Well, I had a response. I'm gonna share a couple of responses from two of my colleagues. This is Reverend Richard Stone. He's a retired unity minister. He lives in Alton, Illinois. A colleague of mine, he wrote this. As far as the presence of evil, I believe that evil has no reality of its own, just as darkness has no reality of its own. However, darkness and evil can be experienced. And so we do, and as light, will dispel the illusion of darkness, so will love overcome evil. I appreciated that. Another colleague of mine, Reverend Laura Barrett Bennett, a longtime friend of mine from many years ago and still today. Here's an excerpt of what she wrote me. She said, this is a simplistic answer to a complex question. To say people are good is to simply acknowledge the source of their being, which is God, in other words, people come from the divine and have access to all of the creative power of that source. Yet how they use that power, that is where good versus evil comes in, it is in the mentality that shapes the action. So what does this all mean? Well, I'm gonna share from one of our premier writers in Unity, Emily Cady who wrote the first book in Unity, Lessons in Truth, and she said this in this book. Man is the last and highest manifestation of divine energy, the fullest and most complete expression or pressing out of God. To man, therefore, is given dominion over all other manifestations. Man is a threefold being made up of spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, our innermost real being, the absolute part of us, the I of us, has never changed, though our thoughts and circumstances may have changed hundreds of times. This part of us is standing forth of God into visibility. She says man is the last and highest manifested of divine energy, the fullest and most complete expression or pressing out of God. Now considering all these statements, when human beings do crappy things to other human beings. What is that? The nicest thing to say is this. They have gone into a state of temporary insanity. Now with some people it seems like a permanent reality, like that's their true identity, they are what they do. And that's what it appears like to us when we see a repetition a behavior that can only be described as hmm, not good, but destructive or bad, not enhancing the world, not supporting others. But it's behavior, not identity. Identity is who we are. Behavior is what we do. And there's a distinct difference. And it takes a certain amount of discernment and perspective to be able to distinguish between identity and behavior. When we're looking at something and somebody and listening to them speak and all this crazy stuff is coming out, we have to get to that place within ourselves where we are identifying with the holy, the divine, the good in ourselves to then to be able to perceive that even through a heavy thickness, but to see that in somebody else, even though what's coming from them doesn't measure up to that. And that's one of the big challenges we have in life, is to remember that. And I'll tell you, I have a hard time remembering it sometimes. 
So these five essential teachings of unity, it's more than theology. You can call it theology. I mean, theology is one of those big words. It means what do you think about God, literally. But it's practical Christianity. It's stuff that you can just take with you right out of the service and use it, probably just driving home. But the second principle, people are good. We are those people. We meaning the human race. Sometimes we don't always do good things. Sometimes we say hurtful things, usually without thinking about it. But the difference is this. We don't have to stay there. We can correct ourselves. We can say, hey, Alden, cut that out. <laughs> Choose something else. So we can aspire to live up to the billing that we're getting from the book of Genesis and the book of Psalms, which say we were born, created in the image and likeness of God. We're created a little bit lower than God. So maybe well, people are good. I mean, we did have an example I shared earlier. Remember these guys? I don't mean these guys. The person who took the photo. People are good. They really are. Now, when I was thinking of this, this talk today, I always uh, think in terms of music, and, and I, frankly, I was so out of touch with what was going on at the church, I had no idea what was planned. You're thinking, oh, well, he's on top of things, isn't he? <laughs> and there's a, there was this one song that kept mm, rolling around in my head, and... Um, It, it's a song I never sang before, and I looked it over from a uh, guitar playing point of view and realized, you know, that's way too complicated to do when for you it's about five in the afternoon back in Sweden. So I found another song about people. The one I was planning to sing was by Barbara Streisand, and I don't think that's a song for me. What do you say? <laughs> Okay, but this song here is about, has the word people in it, and uh, maybe you've heard it before. for all the lonely people thinking that life has passed them by don't give up until you drink from the silver cup ride that highway in the sky this is for all the single people that love has left them dry Don't give up until you drink from the silver cup Never know until you try Well I'm on my way Well I'm back to stay Well I'm on my way back home has left them run Don't give up until you drink from the silver cup It'll never take you down or never give you up You never know until you try
Well, it's time to prepare for a song. Number 39, Spirit-Led, Spirit-Fed in the Blue Book. Spirit-led, spirit-fed, everywhere and always I am spirit-led, I am spirit-led, spirit-fed, everywhere and always I am spirit-led, flowing like a river of peace, I am nature's wondering child, love cannot be added to me. I am made complete in the divine. I am spirit-led, spirit-fed. Everywhere and always I am spirit-led. I am spirit-led, spirit-fed. Everywhere and always I am spirit-led. There is magic in every like a beautiful song as i'm choosing my way there's a voice inside to guide me along i am spirit led spirit fed everywhere and always i am spirit led i am spirit led spirit fed everywhere and always i am spirit led Everywhere and always, I am spirit-led. We now have an opportunity to share of our treasure and of our good with our ministry, Unity of Springfield. We have receptacles, these bowls in the back and in the front to receive any physical donation you'd like to make. You can also donate electronically at unityofspringfieldil.org. You can also text a donation to 217-335-4121. Or you can mail us a check at 417 East Cordelia, Springfield, Illinois, 62703. See, I remember where I live. All right. Now, let us now join together in affirming our offering blessing together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. Amen. And now let us join together in praying the prayer for protection together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us wherever we are. God is and all is well. And now let us join together in the singing, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Hold hands if you'd like. 